Hey, I'm back. Part two of today's double header. We started with Alaska. Now we're going to where is gold in Michigan. So take a look. I'm Prospector Jess at huntingforgold.com. Come visit us sometime and check out what we have. So for this episode, we're going to look at Michigan and there's some peculiar stuff. I've kind of been holding back on talking about Michigan and for that matter, the Great Lakes in general, this, this whole area, because it has some very interesting properties when it comes to gold. We've talked about glaciers. Now we're going to get deep into glaciers. <clears throat> so let's first just take a look at what happens in Michigan. So I'm going to switch over to our to our Michigan uh, uh, module here, show you full screen. And uh, don't forget to partake of the Gold Diggers Underground, the GDU, at sourdoughminers.com. That's where we have a special... Uh, training and, and so forth on how to find gold in general. It covers how to make these maps and a lot more, a lot more. So, uh, and also anybody who has any problems getting access, please let me know it at request contact at huntingforgold.com. Just send an email and say what your question or your whatever you have. Um, we stand by our guarantees and all the other stuff we do. So anyway, for tonight, I just wanted to take a look at Michigan. So let's look. Um, First thing you ought to know is if you take a look down here on the main part here, you see virtually no gold. And that's and that's because of this glacial property. We had each one of these lakes was scoured out by massive glaciers in the Ice Age. And then as they retreated, they left behind kind of this history of, you know, the, the deepened areas so water fills them. And two, the scour that they did to remove pretty much anything that had any value from those areas, except in certain places. And we'll take a look at that in a minute. <clears throat> but but the primary thing, the lesson here is there's not a whole lot of gold, gold in southern part of Michigan. You have to go up in the upper peninsula to find it. And so you're going to be up, you know, around uh, Manilow Island and that kind of stuff up on Lake Superior. And uh, that's where that's where the gold is. For Michigan a uh, big uh, thunderous applause so for now you know you just have to understand that's what you're going for if you're in Michigan that doesn't mean you can't find gold down on the lower part you just have to go looking for flower gold because it's going to be primarily glacial till and flower that was the word I was looking for the other night for fine powder so fine it becomes almost dangerous in terms of its content of silica that you can actually breathe in and cause trouble but it's called glacial till and it's what makes glacial outflow the water that comes out in the streams and rivers that feed from underneath a melting glacier milky white they're milky white because they're carrying a very fine residue of this silica that goes on down and eventually deposits downstream now with that goes any gold that it ground to a very fine flour and that means those things can have rich deposits of flower gold, but you just have to know what you're looking for. Specifically, you're looking for black sands to start with. So, but in those fine, fine, ultra fine things, it's pretty tough. It's tough to set, separate out. It's tough to find enough that's, you know, because of how it spreads out. But again, if there's something that might cause it to concentrate from the standpoint of water flow and, and where that fine gold goes, you could find some rich sands and you'll see some of that on the beaches in uh, Lake Superior. Let's uh, let's zoom in on that region right now. Um, I'm going to take you up here on Upper Peninsula and we can zoom in a little bit further. So right off the bat you see this uh, area around Marquette. That's where there is a lot of gold and uh, in addition to the gold, I want to show you something as we get into one of these. Notice what we're seeing here. We're seeing gold. So a conduit-like nickel copper masses sulfide. So we've talked about this all week long. Sulfide, sulfide. Ores are sulfides. Now, does that mean you'll never find copper nuggets? No. And will you ever find gold nuggets? No. Let me show you what a copper nugget looks like, just as an aside, just in case you're wondering. Here's an interesting picture. Take a look at that. Looks a lot like a gold nugget, except I want to caution you. People tend to plate these because they can make a lot of money. Now, this particular one is a copper nugget 
smushed together because remember in that in that picture we were just looking at it talked about silver well there's silver and copper right in that picture and that's what you're looking at when you look at a native copper nugget or native silver if it's got copper nearby because the silver will tend to oxidize and turn pitch black basically if it's by itself you're rare to find something this this nice a specimen but when it's next to copper there's sort of some protective things that go on and in this particular case, that's a gorgeous looking nugget, but it's copper. Now, one of the first things that you should, you should be aware of when people plate them, plate copper nuggets, they will tend to look like this one. And I want to call your attention. Notice the depth of the dents and the nature of them. They don't fold as easily, nowhere near as easily as gold because they're much stiffer. They have a higher hardness. And so what happens is they tend to be a little bit more angular but particularly the surfaces don't look as deeply pitted. They don't look as gnarly. I'll call it that. Prospector Jess will coin a term. The gnarly looking nugget. So what you're looking for when you're looking for a gold nugget is something that looks much more uh, in-depth and much has much more character to it. Lots of folded pieces. And if you look carefully around the edges of some of the openings, like this area here where it's pitted and you can kind of see a little bit of quartz, you know, probably from where it was put in the load. Well, on a gold nugget, this would all fold over on top of that. And what you tend to see is a little tiny like hint of foil almost like it like it pounded it flat and then it bent it over and, and folded backwards and then and then collapsed in. And that that is a very basically you can't fake that. It's a fingerprint. And so when experts look at gold nuggets, they know it's a forgery when they know it's you know, when they see this characteristic like this one has where where it's got all this interesting properties, but it's it's all you know kind of gently folded and looks a little too kind of plump well that's not a gold nugget that's a plated copper nugget and they will ding you know the other way to do a specific gravity test because this thing will fail you know it's nowhere near the density of gold so so that's what i wanted to point your attention to when it comes to stuff you're going to find out in that northern area of michigan because there's a fair amount of copper nuggets up there they're good for collectors they just won't fetch the price that a gold nugget will and if you see something as, as gorgeous as this one, you know, you'll find collectors that will want to buy it, but they'll buy it at what the going price is for the size of nugget it is. And that's different than a gold nugget being that large. So let's go back to the Eagle project. So it has copper and nickel, uh, platinum, gold, palladium, cobalt. We talked about palladium a while back. Palladium is now becoming a hot ticket. Its value just jumped over gold here recently because it's uh, something that's going into uh, smog equipment and specifically in smog equipment that's now being deployed in China, which is one of the largest markets for new smog equipment. Everybody else has kind of been running smog for a long time, but now they're getting with the problem because they've got a huge problem in Beijing with uh, automobile exhaust. And one way you solve that technologically is a catalytic converter that's got embedded platinum and palladium. And so they, they have leaned into using palladium uh, partly because they have huge sources of palladium. And so uh, that's what drove the price up. And that's actually not a bad thing uh, if you can find palladium. So, and cobalt in this one. Um, so that's an interesting mix. But again, all of this uh, gold and silver, just like what you were looking at before, the copper and silver. Uh, this one is uh, copper, gold, and silver. So there's, you know, the, like the thing we're talking about. Um, so anyway, this is the primary area for you to find gold in Michigan. Um, there are some places to go. I'm not quite familiar with that. Maybe somebody could chime in in the questions and answers comments below and throw in uh, places you've prospected in the Upper Peninsula or elsewhere in Michigan. I'd like to hear from you about what you have and if you can share a picture or two of anything you found, including copper nuggets, please do. Uh, uh, if you can't, uh, let me know and we'll figure out a way to share it. Okay. Um, so now let's take a look at one other thing I want to do. This is a hint. We're not going to do Wisconsin tonight, but I wanted to give you a little bit of geology geography. Okay. And so what we're going to do is we're going to turn on the tools again. Okay. Toolbar. Get this guy going. Turn on Wisconsin. Where are you? And let's have a look at the gold that's in Wisconsin. This is a kind of wrap it up time. Gold in Wisconsin. So let's take a look real quick. Okay, notice the pattern we have for gold in Wisconsin. It's sort of 
same property. It's spreading across here. Now remember, if we back off and we look at the Great Lakes, hmm, look at that. It's kind of spreading away from Lake Superior and, and here in Lake Michigan. So basically the gold is spread across these two states in this zone. Because of the nature of glaciation, it has depleted it in some places and either concentrated it or it has left it alone. In other words, the glaciers cut around those regions. I suspect that's more the case. If we dove in just for a moment and looked at the geography, topology, so to speak, we might see some hints. Looks pretty flat. You know, that's the thing about this whole area. It's just so flat. Um, let's see if we can find it around some of these gold mines. Because we might see a hint. So notice these are pits or lakes left behind by the glaciation. So it could very well be that what we're looking at in these finds aren't so much outcroppings or any load that's left behind and has dropped gold out as it is placer deposits left behind as the glacier moved across, things that got sorted out in the process of the ebb and flow of a glacier because glaciers always move in and out, and the flowing waters that went along dropped them in these pits that were left behind for you know because they find gravel in a lot of these places that's another place up in michigan and pretty much in the midwest gravel pits look for places that have natural gravel pits somebody asked me the other day you know well they crush the rock and make gravel no no that's not what we're talking about we're talking about cobbles rounded uh specimens of rock that would be used for road bed or pea gravel that kind of stuff that they pull out of a, a out of a you know zone like this lake here and so in the process, there might be a, a bunch of gold trapped with that gravel. That's the deal. And it'd be down toward bedrock. Again, same rules hold because it's been you know churning up with all that good stuff. So it indicates that this shoreline right in here has, has some gravels associated with it. And in that stuff is gold and vanadium Hancock exploration. So, so go figure. Now, when was that found? Let's take a look at that real quick. Okay, Anderson M. Gear, and it was logged. Department of Natural Resources, 1998. Pretty recent document. Doesn't mean they found it in 98. It just means that, that the records were checked and logged here in 98. But there's a, there's a hint that there may be something going on more recently. There is definitely this kind of activity going on around any valuables like gold. Uh, Rare earths are the hot ticket right now for geologists to seek out. And diamonds, a uh, big, huge, rip-roaring rush in diamonds in Canada. And now they're starting to look at diatremes in areas here in the United States because they all of a sudden realize, you know, just like they did with platinum, you know, we ignored this stuff because we weren't looking at diamonds here. We got them all from South Africa. And now all of a sudden they found out some of the best sources are here in, the, here in North America. Okay, so go figure. But they're looking for a specific kind of lamperite or kimberlite to, to get that stuff. In this case, you'd be looking for a specific kind of gravel pit or some kind of trap for the material. Because there was plenty of material up in Ontario and that part of Canada that came down across in Michigan, came across that section and into the Midwest and was ground to a pulp and delivered into some of these gravel pits. And so what happens is that's where the gold will go. That's also where other rare things might be. And it's just an interesting thing if you can get access to those regions it might be interesting to pursue that and so that's kind of it for tonight on gold in michigan where is gold in michigan um go back to google earth here soaring above michigan wisconsin and the great lakes and so there we are where is gold in Michigan? And I will leave Wisconsin. We'll discuss that one another night. I don't want to. I don't want to do it an injustice. Give it its own night. But I just wanted to point out to those of you who are wondering where the gold went. Well, there's a big hint, and you always want to do that. Check around the area, and that's why I have government gold maps and GDU both cover this business of how to make these custom maps and how you can kind of look at them and discover these things. I I just look like I'm just freewheeling here. The answer is now I've learned to play with a tool, and that's what I teach. So I will catch you later. Good prospecting and good night. <laughs> Thanks for joining me. And I hope you enjoyed both of today's uh, special edition after yesterday's Facebook fiasco. So uh, check us out at 
slash GDU backslash. Just check that out and I'll look at you and I mean, I'll talk to you tomorrow. <laughs> look at you. I'll talk to you tomorrow. You'll look at me. Oh boy, crusty character. Anyway, I'll catch you then. Good night.